Okay. So today we start with the uh, next topic, which is uh, topic five uh, regarding uh, this topic. Before we move on to this topic five, uh, if you have any question regarding topic four, which was a ratio analysis, uh, please ask me a question. Any question regarding ratio analysis? No, sir, not yet. No question, nobody has question? How about, no? No, no question. Okay, all right. Um, now we move on to the next topic, which is topic five. Before we move on to topic five, we need to recall lecture one. So, lecture one, which was introduction. If you remember this introduction, in this introduction, we study about users. Remember users, how many types of users we have? Two types. Two types. Which two types? Internal and external users. Internal and external. And externals. So we recall actually. So we have our two types of users that we have studied. What is the difference between these two users? Did you remember? What is the difference between these two users? Two types of users? Um, internal user are think inside business, like mm -hmm. CEO employees. Mm -hmm. And external user are like, Shareholder, maybe outside of outside of company, outside of the company. So, okay. So, who provides informations to internal users and who provides informations to external users? Do you have any idea? Who provides informations to internal and who provides informations to external? You remember that? Anybody, any idea? Who provides information to internal users and who provides information to external user? I think we discussed about this thing. Have a look at your notes and um, give me the answer. Who provides information to internal and who provides information to external? Yes, I, yes, I can see the notes uh, there. So tell me who provides information to internal user and who provides information to external users? What do you think? No idea? Don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember? So let me send you the file and have a look in that file. So it's that. So I, I send you the and I send you one file. You open this file and give me the answer.
So check it and tell me. So I also opened this file for you so you can see uh, here. This file. That's topic one. So external users, who provides information to external user? And who provides information to internal user? You see that? So tell me, who provides information to external user? So internal user are workers in factory manufacturing and director and CEO. Yeah, and but, 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 but who provides information to internal users? How they get information, internal users, how do they get information? They get information with the help of what? They get information with the help of management accounting and financial accounting provides information to external users. Remember? Can you see the financial accounting and management accounting in, the, in, this, in this file? Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yeah. So management accounting, what is a management accounting? Management accounting is a process to providing information to internal users so they can make a useful decisions inside the company. Same thing on the other hand, financial accounting is a process to record the financial information, which is financial statement. And V provides financial statement to the external users. So exactly that's the, the thing. Financial accounting is a process to preparing financial report. If you go back, you have a look that financial accounting is a process to prepare financial records. All right. And management accounting is a process to providing internal information, operating information, information in relation of product and services. From start, start producing product and services until we sell product and services. All right. So this is the um, idea behind uh, external users and internal users. So that that's what I told you to, to have a look. Now let's, we continue. Here. So how external users, how they get information? They get information through financial accounting. financial accounting, All right? And how internal users get information? They get information through? Management accounting. Management accounting. Management accounting. So management accounting is a process to provide information to internal users. On the other hand, financial accounting is a process to prepare financial report and with the help of financial report. So financial accounting helps to prepare financial report, All right? Financial report. And this financial report helps users, helps external users to make important decision inside the company. And you already study what inside financial report, especially we study about the primary source of financial statement. So in this, you already study income statement, right? You already study income statement. And you already study how to prepare 
balance sheet. How to prepare balance sheet, right? I guess that's your form. So whatever you have studied until topic four, right? Ratio analysis was topic four, right? Can you check again? Yes, ratio analysis is topic four. Sir. Yes, it's a topic four, topic four ratio analysis. So the idea is we study topic from topic one to topic four. Topic one to topic four, we study about financial accounting. Right? We study about financial accounting and in management accounting from, from topic five onwards. From topic five onwards, from today onwards, whatever we will study, we only study about management accounting. So in this in this complete course, you're gonna study both kinds of accounting, financial accounting that you already finished, all right? And um, management accounting. So if you talk about your final exam, so in your midterm exam, in your midterm exam, you remember you, you, you cover topic one, two, and topic three, right? You cover three topics. And in your final exam, topic four onwards. So uh, I think you will study topic five in management accounting, uh, topic six, seven, eight. So you study four topic related to financial accounting and you will study a four topic related to management accounting. All right, so today is the, you can call it today is the first topic for management accounting right or you can call it this is the fifth topic for this subject all right so now have you got the idea financial accounting and management accounting yes okay so today onwards we will start with management accounting so before we start management accounting do you have any question before we start this topic five, anybody has any question? No. No question? Now let's start with the, uh, the meaning of management accounting. So the first thing is a uh, meaning or introduction. Okay, so what is management accounting? What is, uh, what is the purpose of management accounting or wh what is management accounting? So management accounting, basically it's a process. Management accounting is a process to collect information to collect information of course information about internal control right internal control Internal control means in simple language, whatever is happening inside the company, collect that information and transfer that information to the internal users. And again, why internal users need information? Internal users need information in order to make a decision, all right? So 
management accounting is a process to collect information, which is internal control in simple language within the company in, or operating related uh, activities or operating related information. Operating means product and services related. Right. So process to collect information within the company within the company for internal users so they will be able to make right decision make decision we're able to make right decision that's the, the the meaning of management account all right now idea is the same financial accounting provide financial information to the internal users management accounting providing information to internal users all right providing informations right no matter is it management accounting or financial accounting because both are accounting and accounting means we record the information why we record information for people the people inside the company internal and people outside the company which are external right so that is management accounting the meaning of management accounting let's uh, let's discuss more about management accounting what is the scope of management accounting scope means what kind of like we are discussing here information right information what kind of action what is the nature of the information what information internal users they need it like for example external users they need information about company profit company sales company cost right company manufacturing cost maybe company non manufacturing cost right they need information about company assets company liability company cash company capital right so that's why all this information we can collect through the financial statement or income statement or balance sheet right so we know what is the nature of information that we that is useful for the external use external users here we're going to discuss about the nature of information what actually management accounting covers what information management accounting is providing to the internal users in simple language what actually management accounting do what is the scope of management accounting what management accounting covers right what actually management accounting covers right so we call it the scope of management accounting Now we discuss about the scope. Right. Now we discuss about the scope. What inside the management accounting? So in this scope, the first thing is a planning and controlling controlling uh, i don't really remember when we studied topic 1 did we study the difference between financial accounting management accounting did you remember that can you have a look at your notes and confirm me that whether we study about the difference between financial accounting and management accounting or not We only talk about like the types uh, of types of types. users. Yeah, yeah, type of user. And did, did we study about the difference between financial accounting and management? So let's start with the scope of uh, management accounting. So the first first scope of management accounting 
is planning and controlling. Planning and controlling. It's helped to make plan. So always remember, management accounting provides information for future. What we're gonna do in future, what we're gonna do for future, what we're gonna produce. So management accounting provides information for future. And financial accounting provides information about past. About past means last year company profit. Company profit in last 12 months. Company financial performance in last period or last month or last quarter or last year. So financial accounting provides information about past and management accounting provides information about future because management accounting involved in planning. So it's providing informations to the users, internal users. So they're gonna make plan for company, whatever company wanna do in future, all right? So now the question is why we have to do planning? Why planning is important? Why we do plans? Harry, maybe. What is the reason behind planning? Why we do plans? To prepare or forecast. For forecasting, right? And why we do planning means forecasting. But why we forecast? Why we forecast? Tell me why we forecast, why we plans. For example, you plan for your study. This is called study planning. You, you make your schedule, your study schedule, your study timetable, right? Um, especially in your exams times, you make a plan for your study. Um, this day to this day, this chapter, this chapter, this topic, uh, sorry, this exercise, this information, right? This day, this topic, this day, this subject, right? During exams times, not exams times, during throughout the semester, we always make a plan for our study, right? Why we do plans related to our studies? I'm talking about uh, good students. I'm not talking about the lazy students. I'm, uh, I'm talking about the students who, who take studies very seriously. So they, that, 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 that students, they make plans. Why they make plans? Tell me, if you make plan for your studies, why you make plan for your study? Any idea? Anybody? To prepare or avoid mistake or maybe? Avoid what? Avoid uh, maybe mistake or unknown? That's not only the purpose to making plan. Uh, not, can, not tell me why we make plans. Why students make plan during their exams time? No idea? Very simple. We make plan. No idea. Yep. Why we make plan?
we make plan so we can achieve our objective. Only the, that's only the purpose of planning. What, whatever, whenever we make plan, the reason behind planning, reason behind forecasting, so we can achieve our objective. So, but of course, before you making plans to achieve our objective, to achieve objective, we have to decide the objective. We have to set the objective. For example, I give example about your exams times. During exams time or throughout the semester, good students, they always make plan for their studies, which day, which subject, which day, which subject, and how many hours in one, one day, or how many hours on weekends, right? They always make a plan for their studies. Why? So they can get good marks. How many marks? It depends upon them how many marks they want to achieve, they want to get. So before you start making plan for anything, you have to set your objective that we will discuss later. This is called budgeting process. Budgeting means planning. Planning process or budgeting process, that's maybe uh, uh, topic six or topic seven. I think topic seven, I guess. So that's the reason for planning. So we do planning. We do planning to achieve objectives, all right? We do planning to achieve objectives, forecasting, all right? Next is controlling. Now, what is the meaning of controlling here? Controlling means the comparison between something you want to achieve and something you actually achieve. When you compare it, this is called controlling, all right? Contro you can say that controlling is a process to compare your objective with your result, all right? So controlling means compare your objective, which is comes through the planning, compare your objective. Objective means something you want, all right? You compare your objective with with results, your outcomes, your output. You're gonna compare it. For example, let's say you're planning to achieve 90% in your finance subject, right? And you, you start making planning, following 90% uh, your, in your mind. And then you, you, you do all kinds of preparations and your notes and you study everything. And then you go for exams and you sit in your exams. After sitting your exams, you get your result. Now the question is, how can you understand? You achieve objective or you did not achieve objective. When you compare your objective with your result, you want to achieve 90% marks and you study by keeping 90% marks in your mind. And then you get the results. So if you want to know you achieve your objective or not, you're going to compare your objective with your result. So for example, your result is 92%. It means, yes, you achieve your objective or your result is 80%. So that means you did not achieve the objective. So this is called the controlling. So controlling is a process to analyze, analyze your targets, analyze your performance, or you can say that controlling is a performance measurement tool, all right? I guess planning is a tool to achieve objective and controlling is a performance measurement tool.
performance. Measurement. Tune. All right. Performance measurement tool. That's called controlling. All right. So planning, controlling, both involved in management accounting. Obviously, that's not in the financial accounting because financial accounting, you're providing them information to external users, how they use, what they do, what they don't do. It depends upon them. We cannot control them because there is a different nature of different types of external users, but all internal users within the company. They work under one roof, right? So it's very important to know that that whoever is working in a company, they that person is ob achieving objective or not. What is the performance of person? So obviously, company is a group of people who are working together to achieve the objective. So by keeping company objective in mind, top manager assign roles, responsibility, and duties to the different manager. So in simple language, so we can say that if each manager is achieving its objective, so each manager is perform performing very well. So obviously company is performing very well. If people in a company, their performance is bad, how can company achieve objective? All right, so that's why management, with the help of management accounting, so this kind of controlling things involved in management accounting. So it's very important to control their people. That's the meaning of control their people. Control their people means measuring the performance of the people. All right, that's the meaning of controlling here. Now let's move on to the next. Another scope of management accounting. What else management accounting do or can do? Another scope of management accounting is a estimation of product and service profitability. Product and service profitability. Now, what does it mean product and service profitability? Is this product is a profitable or not? Is this product profitable to produce and profitable to sell or not? How can we understand it? I think this thing you already study in your, in your financial accounting, in especially in your income statement. Remember how we calculate profit or how we calculate loss? profit or loss. So sales minus cost of goods sold. That's your gross profit, right? That's your gross profit minus operating cost. Operating cost, that's your net profit, or you can call it operating income. Operating income. And then you minus interest, minus tax, minus dividend, right? This is gross profit. This is net profit. Now, gross profit means product is profitable to produce. If you have gross profit, this means green signals to product. Move on. Keep processing this product. Bring that product to the next level, which is marketing, advertising, packaging, labeling, distribution, and then sell. That you have net profit. If your product has a loss, means gross loss. Gross loss means this product is not profitable to produce anymore. So stop processing this product. Stop marketing. Stop packaging. Stop labeling. Because if you have a gross loss, obviously there is no any chance that you have a net profit because gross profit comes first and net profit comes later. If you have gross profit, then you may have net profit. If you have a gross loss, there's no any chance that you have a net profit. And once you have a gross loss, stop everything. So this is called the estimation of product profitability. Product profitability means 
maybe product profitability means by estimating the gross profit and estimating the net profit. Net profit means finally, this product is a profitable or not. For example, we go to buy any, any stuff, let's say we go to buy mobile phone, whatever mobile phone we are buying from the store, that mobile phone is a profitable product for the Apple company. That's why Apple company is selling this iPhone. If this iPhone has a gross loss, company never process that iPhone further. Company never pack it, company never sell it, company never distribute it, company never do marketing for their product. All right, so it's very important to estimate the product or service profitability by looking at its gross profit and net profit. So gross profit, net profit, uh, now, uh, when we move on to topic six, we will study some, some different thing that you did not study in your uh, financial accounting. That is another way to calculate gross profit. Sometimes we call it gross profit. Sometimes we call it contribution margin. All right. But before you understand that contribution margin is like as gross profit, but of course, a little bit different. Before you study contribution margin, we have to understand the types of cost, fixed cost and variable cost, the types of cost. Right. So that's the meaning of estimation of product and service profitability. This is the job of management account. All right. Let's move on to next. Next is E E. E. This is called triple E. Triple E, e stands for economic, E stands for efficiency, and E stands for effectiveness. All right. So E stands for economic, economic, efficient. and effectiveness. First thing is economic. Now, what does it mean economic? Economic means whatever resources we are acquiring. For example, you need to buy raw material. All right, raw material means cost, right? And we have a sales. Cost come first, you produce first, right? And then you sell it. You produce first and then you sell. After produce and sell, then you have a profit or loss. So always remember cost come first. We always calculate the cost, we estimate the cost and then after estimating the cost, we to decide the price, we sell. So second thing, we sell. After selling, the third thing, we estimate profit and loss. You know that, that, that you also study in your um, financial accounting. Now, what is the meaning of economic? So always remember, when you buy, or whenever you spend anything, that must be economic. Economic means low cost. Remember, low cost, not low quality. I'm not talking about low quality. I am talking about low cost. What, there's a difference between low cost and low quality. For example, company wanna purchase raw material. Company has, there are two different suppliers, supplier A and supplier B. Both supplier has the same quality of material. And one supplier, selling cheaper than the other supplier. So obviously company, will, company should choose the low cost supplier. Company should not compromise with this quality, of course, but, but that, that, that's different, different things about discussing about the quality of the product. But the idea here is uh, we should make efforts to minimize the cost of the company because you know that if your cost is low, your profit is high. And that's, a, that's the objective of company to maximize the profit, right? So whatever resources you are acquiring, you 
you you you you put efforts to minimize the cost of that resources so obviously if the cost is reducing profit is increasing so focus on the low cost which means economic like for example why we call it economic sometimes we travel in a planes right and they always write economic class and business class economic class means low cost not not low quality because flight is the same low cost why low cost because you have a less less services all right but it doesn't mean that they they're going to treat you bad of course they also treat you nice but of course business class people they have some additional uh, services compared to the economic class right so economic means low cost right so resources must be low cost the reason is that if the cost is reduced profit is increased second thing is efficient efficient means company uh, should maximize its efforts efficient i think this thing i also explained you last time efficiency uh, efficient or efficiency means efforts your inputs we have to maximize the efforts we have to maximize the inputs obviously if you maximize the inputs there is a probability that you have a high outputs if your inputs are low there is no any chances that your outputs will be high all right so efficient means maximizing the efforts probably uh, maximizing efforts in terms of improving something continuous improvement continuously improving your things continuously put your maximum efforts to maximize anything maybe the quality of the product designing of the product continuous improvement that you can say that that's also involved in management accounting and third thing is a uh, effectiveness effectiveness means maximize the output output that also indicate that quality not simply maximizing the efforts also maximizing the quality as well for example during exam times student normally study more study um, too much time compared to the uh, normal period right exam period student maximize their inputs but not only maximizing inputs it's very important to maximize your out, i mean you improve your effectiveness as well for example one chapter how many hours you take to study to complete the chapter so let's say you are you are taking i don't know 3 to 4 hours to finish one chapter right in this 3 to 4 hours when you finish this chapter how many percent of this chapter you understand that's called the effectiveness that's called the quality of study not the quantity of study all right so quantity and quality means efficiency and effectiveness both important when you are putting your efforts anywhere efforts are important because when you put efforts you have a output not only efforts don't say that oh i try my best not just your best it's very important what is the outcome of your best that's also important all right so efforts important but result also makes sense too so you are putting efforts but if there is no any results there is no any point of putting that effort so you are putting that effort so make sure you are putting efforts in a right way so you can maximize your output for example you are studying 3 to 4 hours you are taking 3 to 4 hours in this chapter when you are studying this 3 to 4 hours you must be focused in this 3 to 4 hours not just simply just open book and then at the same time you open mobile phone you read, you read book one sentence and then you look mobile phone and then you take like 4 or 5 hours and you finish the chapter but in this 4 or 5 hours what is the quality of uh, of your 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 study your study quality is very low because your time you spend more on the mobile phone rather than your textbook this is called the effectiveness quality is very important how many product you produce important but in this product let's say you are producing one day you are producing 100 products that's called efficiency your efficiency is to produce 100 products effectiveness means in this 100 products how many products are defective how many products are low quality if your defective rate is high 
means more product has a problem there is no any no any reason to put efforts because you're not just simply putting efforts you are wasting resources you produce 10 pro 100 products in 100 products 90 product has a problem so means your efforts are not very good your efforts are useless because after spending time money and resources still your mistake is 90 percent means you are wasting resources so that's why efficiency and effectiveness both are important quantity and quality both are equally important all right so you cannot simply say that it's very important to maximize the quality no it's very it's in quantity and quality both all right why quantity important so you can meet the mass demand you can meet the demand of the con consumer that's why quantity important why quality important so you will keep attracting the clients client will come back to you again if the quality is very good not just client will come back you also minimize the cost if your quality is high because you don't have to spend another time another labor another resources to produce one product again and again because if your product has a problem you have to fix it you're spending more resources on one product which is not really good that's why economic efficient efficiency and effectiveness very important factors and that also comes under the management academy that control over the economic activity efficiency and effectiveness they 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 closely measure all this kind of economic efficiency and effectiveness. You can say that these are the principles of management account, economic efficiency and effectiveness. All right. Is that okay? Any question? Any question? Yes or no? No question for now, sir. No question. No question for now. So now we can have a break. And after break, uh, we will continue with the next uh, point of your scope. All right. Okay. So, we, so we can have a break. Okay. So now let's move on to the uh, next uh, scope, the the third scope of uh, management accounting is. assessment of capital investment assessment of capital investment now what does it mean capital investment you know that if you want to start a company if you want to start a company, what do you need? You need a finance, right? Finance means capital, right? We need a capital. Once we have a capital, what we're gonna what what we're gonna do with this capital? We're going to invest. Invest. We're going to invest this capital. Where are we gonna invest this capital? We're gonna invest this capital to buy assets. Buy assets, which is, you know that, land, building, plant, machinery, material, equipments, all kinds of resources that we needed to start and run the business, all right? Now, <clears throat> before you start invest, the money or before you buy any kinds of assets it's very important to assess assess the project project means assets investment it's very important to assess the project where we're gonna invest so what does it mean assess assess means before you investing money in that particular project you have to ask some question from yourself the question is why this project is important to invest in comparison with the project. Why is it important? 
this project is important because of various reasons. So maybe so this project is important because of various reasons. So maybe the reason is that this project give you higher, higher return, higher return, higher profit at the given level of risk, right? Or this project will take you to recover more money, recover money faster, right? So you can recover money fast in this project. That's why we like this project. Or maybe this project maximize the productivity. Productivity. Productivity in terms of efficiency, in terms of efficiency, and in terms of effectiveness. Efficiency and effectiveness. So, so this is the very basic ideas to assess the capital investment. So in simple language, before you invest money in any kinds of project, it's very important to analyze or evaluate the project. We also call it capital budgeting. We also call it investment appraisal. It's really important for the manager to do that. That's exactly what we do. For example, we're gonna buy mobile phone. Mobile phone is our assets, right? Before we're going to buy mobile phone, we're gonna assess that is it really profitable to, to, to invest money in this mobile phone or is it profitable to invest money in under, another mobile phone? We're gonna assess it in our general life. Why we do that? Because our money is limited. Capital is limited. If once a time you invested money in the, uh, with the low return investment or high risky uh, assets, then you have a probability to lose money faster, higher risk that nobody likes to take. So that's why in order to avoid any kinds of risk or any kinds of uncertainty, it's very important to make assessment. Make assessment means make evaluation on that assets, where are you gonna invest in? All right, okay. And the last scope of management accountant or management accounting is uh, advice, on product mix, advice on product mix. Now, what does it mean product mix? Product mix means when one company producing different types of product, we call it market segmentations as well if you study in your marketing subject. So product, product mix means when one company, when one company going to produce various kinds of products. Let's take example of Apple company. Apple company, they have a MacBook, right? They have a Apple TV, right? They have a iPod, right? They have a iPhone, iPhone, and they have a iPad, right? And of course, they have a Apple store. They have an app store maybe they have some other accessories, all right? So these are the example of product mix, all right? Now, advice on product mix. Now, what is the meaning of advice on product mix? Advice on product mix means, of course, all these are the product. What this product needs, if you wanna produce this product, what do you need? You need resources, right? You need resources. And always remember, every company resources are limited, right? Of course, you have a limited money and resources are limited. So before you start producing any of this product, it's very important to calculate which product is a more profitable. Whichever product is a more profitable, company will focus on that product because uh, the, the other day I was reading one articles about the Apple company and I came to know that surprisingly, I came to know that Apple store is the most profitable product for the company. The company gonna generate the revenue, Apple, Apple app store going to play very, very uh, significant 
role in that company revenue. All right. So what, what does it mean? It means company simply has to give the rank to their product. After ranking, uh, giving rank to their product, then company going to allocate its resources. We also call it resource allocation, allocation of resources, resources allocation. All right. So which product we should resource allocation means on the basis of the rank, on the basis of rank. Rank means profitability. Whichever product has a higher profitability, we're going to choose that product as a first. So you're going to invest this money here first. And then let's say second one is iPhone. Let's say third one is maybe, I don't know, let's say iPad, then maybe a notebook, then maybe uh, maybe uh, TV, and then maybe iPod, and maybe then accessories. I don't know. But the idea is that it's very important to advise on the product mix. It's very important to analyze the product mix, which product is higher in demand. Whichever product is higher in the demand, of course, you focus on that product. All right? That's the meaning of the uh, advice on product mix. Right? So, did you understand? Is that okay? Uh, so, can you explain it like one more time, please? Uh, advice on product mix, right? Yes. Okay. First of all, before we understand the pro advice on product mix, it's very important to understand what is product mix. Product mix means when company is producing different types of product, not only one type of product, all right, various types of product. I guess, for example, let's take example of Samsung company. Samsung company are producing different kinds of products. Samsung company may be involved in constructions. Samsung company is involved in heavy machines, heavy vehicles, right? A Samsung company also involved in electronics and electronics, they have various things. Electronics in relation of mobile phones, maybe in relation of some uh, kitchen appliances, uh, maybe electronics related to air condition and so on. So that's called the product mix. When one company is producing different kinds of product. If you take example of Nike, or the shoe company, Nike company is not only producing shoes, they're also producing some sports wear, right? They're also producing some, some other accessories, right? They're also producing some, some water bottles, right? So that's the meaning of product mix. Now advise on product mix. Advice on product mix means when you start producing product, like for example, Nike company start producing its product, Nike company has to, has to give the priorities to the product which is the higher profitable or higher in demand in the market, like in Nike shoes. In my, I, I don't know, I think Nike shoes are the most uh, demandable product that Nike company has in comparison with maybe sportswear in comparison with water bottles, in comparison with some other accessories. But Nike shoes are more in demand, right? So Apple, uh, so Nike company should focus on the shoes production first. And once, once shoes production has been done, resources left, then find the second product, which is high in demand, then third product high in demand. Like, let me give you another example. For example, you have a, you have a hamburger shop right? And your raw material is a bread, right? Let's say you have a two product, hamburger A and hamburger B, right? So this is, for example, let's say it's a chicken hamburger, right? And let's say this hamburger is a seafood. Let's say it's a fish hamburger, right? Now you have a only, for example, you have only one bread left. So this is called product mix. So you, you, are, you are selling two different types of product, not only chicken hamburger. You have a chicken, you have fish, and maybe something else. So for example, you have only one bread left. Now the question is, you have a two different order. One customer order chicken hamburger, or ch chicken, yeah, chicken hamburger. Another customer order fish hamburger, right? So, but you can accept only one. Now the question is which hamburger you will 
select obviously you will select the hamburger which is more profitable for you for example you choose fish hamburger which is more profitable for you more profitable means which hamburger has a low cost of production but the same price higher profit right so you will reject the chicken hamburger and you will accept fish hamburger to sell for that particular customer. Sometimes this thing also happens. This is called the advice own product mix. Which product you're gonna choose among all? So if you have a limited resources, where you should apply resources? You have, uh, you have uh, two breads left, for example. So you give priority to the fish and then one whatever bread left, then you will apply. If no bread left, then you will not produce chicken hamburger. You will only, you, you, you will only sell fish hamburger. Is that okay? Is that fine? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. Any other question? No more, sir. So scopes are finished. So, um, so we stop here. All right, so that's enough for uh, today's lecture. So scope are finished. So in the next, uh, so next lecture, we will start with the difference between financial accounting and management accounting, and then we will move on. All right, so any question? No, sir, not for now. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Same time, one o'clock. Okay. Is it a new will be a new link or the same old link like this? No, one? new link. Okay. I will, I will send you the link maybe tomorrow morning or maybe this afternoon. Okay. All right. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, sir. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you.